iPhone 15 is definitely the biggest iPhone upgrade in a few years. It's actually a bigger upgrade than the 14 Pro of last year to the 15 Pro of this year. But after using it for seven days straight, I've kind of come to the decision to sell my iPhone 15. And I'm gonna explain why in this seven days later review of the iPhone 15. The iPhone 15 carries over the same design DNA as every other iPhone before it. You can tell it's an iPhone, there's no question about it. And at first I was not too impressed with the design, but I must admit that the frosted finish has really grown on me. I like how the glass feels and looks in comparison with other iPhones, but I was very specific with what I just said. I said I like the glass. I do not like the colors of the new iPhones. I think that they're very muted and dull. And for me personally, I like something that's a little bit more bold and punchy and just in your face and saturated and this phone is not that with that said though out of all the colors that they have i really do like the blue one it's very close to white and in the past i've gone with either space black or gray or purple phone so I'm okay with getting a white phone this time around. It's like a little drop of blue. The iPhone 15 has retained some of the things that its bigger brother, the 15 Pro lost, like the mute switch on the side. But overall, it is a curvier and lighter phone that feels really good and sturdy in your hand compared to every other year before this. Oh, and this year in the box, Apple included a USB-C to USB-C cable. And that's for the USB-C port at the bottom of the iPhone. Yup, it has a USB-C port. This for me has probably been the biggest reason to upgrade to the iPhone 15. I'm able to do things like connect it to an external wireless microphone, connect it to an SSD and more. This means you can do a lot on the iPhone. Like the possibilities are pretty much endless. But for most casual folks, it's definitely going to mean that you're not going to be able to use any of your old lightning accessories. So yeah, that car charger that you have, you're probably gonna have to give it to someone else. Over the last week, I've personally been in situations where I was just going out randomly. I didn't really bring any cables with me and I needed to charge. No one else around had a USB USB-C cable because as much as we say like everybody has it and every device has that there's still a lot of people that don't even know what USB-C is but for me the functionality of the USB-C that I just mentioned is more worth it than not being able to charge up at a certain time now another downside that Apple did very sneakily and I feel like they had no reason to do this but they did it anyway was they kind of kept the USB-C speeds to USB 2.0 which means that the data speeds on the iPhone 15 the base model is as fast as the data speeds on the previous iPhones for the last few years using Lightning. And that kind of sucks because they could have done a lot with it. They could have made it a lot quicker to charge. And also they could have increased the data speed, put like Thunderbolt speeds on the iPhone 15 Pro and bumped it up to USB 3.0 for their base model iPhone 15. But they did not do that because they are probably saving it for a future upgrade. Now, like I mentioned that USB-C port can be used for a lot of things, but the main thing that I think a lot of people well, I know a lot of people will use it for is charging. So that kind of brings me to the battery. The battery on the iPhone 15 is relatively the same as the previous year. The funny thing is though, coming from the iPhone 14 Pro that I owned for the last year, I found that this battery life is the same, if not better than that version. But for me, I can spend a day on social media, texting friends, responding to emails and everything else and charge by around 4 p.m. if I have to go out. So while they should have unlocked the faster speeds for me personally, I still can last a full casual day with it. For my more heavier days, I'm definitely gonna need to charge it earlier. And that's when I wish that they added the faster charging speeds. Let's talk about the display. The display on the iPhone 15 is pretty solid. I genuinely think it's the exact same panel in terms of the colors and brightness as the iPhone 15 Pro, but we also don't have that 120 hertz, and let's talk about that. There is no 120 hertz on the iPhone 15. Apple could have bumped it up to 90 hertz, but they didn't do that, and the reason why, and let's be frank here, is because a lot of people probably do not notice the difference. Do not kill me, it's just the truth. I've been using Pro devices for the last few years with a 120 hertz display, and it took me about an hour to actually forget that this does not have 120 hertz display. And that's because everything is still smooth, like scrolling through your app pages are still gonna be a smooth experience, social media and all that, it's still smooth. It's not as like buttery as you're gonna get on the 120 hertz displays, of the Pro and any other phone with it, but it's still a good experience and the display, again, is very smooth. Colors are vibrant and watching content on the screen is still a pleasant experience on my horrible 30-year-old eyes. The iPhone 15 also has Dynamic Island, which sounds stupid, but I actually bought the iPhone 14 Pro last year 
because of Dynamic Island, because of what I thought it would be, which it didn't pan out that way. I really wish that they added things like navigation, and I don't think that it, it should have been a pro-only feature, but I'm glad this time around, Apple brought it down to the iPhone 15 and added Dynamic Island because it's much more of a casual feature. You can play and pause music and timers, and as more apps adopt the functionality, it has a lot of potential. I don't really want to talk about speed, uh, but I will just for a quick second because it is something that a lot of people, especially coming from older devices, want to know about. And the iPhone 15 has the A16 chip. It's not a new chip. They didn't really change anything. A couple of years ago, they started putting different chips in different phones now. The iPhone 14 Pro of last year had the A16 chip and that chip was brought over to the 15. And what can I say about it? Again, the phone is smooth. Running through games like Call of Duty Mobile is still a generally good experience. I don't see any type of lag or stuttering at all in my week of using this phone. The speed improvements will definitely be noticed from those coming from like an iPhone 11 or older, but for everybody else, just know that this phone is not slow. I didn't mean to rhyme there. The cameras on the iPhone 15 are essentially the same cameras as the iPhone 14 Pro of last year, but there's a little bit of a difference. You're not gonna get three times telephoto, but there is a two times telephoto lens on this camera. Contrast, exposure, and white balance are all on point with pictures just popping. Is it better than the Pixel? Probably not, but the phone is probably the best all around camera if you're gonna include how no fuss it is to operate. The camera also has a feature that allows you to change photos to portrait mode when the camera detects it retroactively. I said retroactively. Video wise, the front facing camera is pretty solid as well, and most people will probably use the ultra wide mode, which yeah, it's not too bad either. It's mostly the back camera that I like because of how good everything looks. Like yes, it's still a phone camera, because because it's a little bit too over sharpened and the background isn't really compressed as well as you get on a cinema camera. But still, the camera can pass for most people that are taking pictures of food or their kids or just capturing their day. This phone is gonna be a really, really good one that you wanna have in your pocket. This was probably one of the easiest reviews that I've done in a very long time. It has a good design, it has a good camera, it has USB-C and dynamic island, and to me, it's the phone you should buy if you don't do a lot of content creation and use the camera for anything intense. I'm much happier with this phone in the last week than I have been with the iPhone 14 Pro that I bought last year for that whole year. It had a lot of problems for me. It just wasn't a pro phone. This time around, it's a little bit of a difference that you can actually feel. So why at the beginning of this video did I say that I'm gonna get rid of it? And that is not really something that applies to most people. I wanna get the iPhone 15 Pro for that log in video. I should have got it. I do kind of regret not getting it, especially seeing at what people have been doing with it. And yeah, I kinda want to be able to use my phone a little bit more for video. Again, for most people, this is the phone you should buy if you're looking at upgrading. And even if you have an iPhone 14 from last year and you have like a lot of USB-C devices, you still should upgrade to this phone. Anyways, let me know what you think of the iPhone 15 down below in the comments. If you have any questions, let me know and I'll make sure to answer them. Make sure to subscribe because I have a full day in the life video coming out next week. And also give your boy a thumbs up if you found this video useful. Have a good weekend. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.